Look at all these dandelions. That's a Russell Peters joke, fellow Canadian. So, is this a... Oh, I missed it. Was that a real bee or was that a fly that's disguised as a bee so that you don't mess with it? So, yesterday... Oh, I was trying to use up all my gas in my welder. So I made I made this guy right here. And uh, it's pretty cool. But uh, I didn't use up all the gas. You can see that it was starting to. See all that pitting in there? All that porosity? That means that uh, the shielding gas isn't protecting the weld or something like that. And uh, so it's almost out, but it's not quite out. So we're gonna use up all the gas now, making uh, this new thing for the basement pub project. One, two, three, four. Oh, that must not be the code. <laughs> Obviously. Okay, so first, Let's have a look at these chicks. Are they doing well in here? Look at them, they're back there, they're all laying down. Straight chilling. Hey birds, are you guys ready to go outside soon? Probably. I thought you'd be a little more active right now. It's light out, but okay. They don't like perching for some reason. I don't get it. Someone told us that we needed a bigger perch, so I put in this bigger one and they still don't perch. I don't know what their deal is. They're like ducks or something. <laughs> Maybe they'll learn to perch when they go out with the uh, with the hens. We shall see. Okay. Now, I have to gather some material. I think we're going to be using some rebar. I have a whole bunch, right here, okay, one, two, that might be enough, but I'll grab a third, three, I wrote down the measurements that I need, 16 and a quarter, 28 and This makes one of the nicest sounds in the world. Check it out. Sad boy hours 
That's about as far as I can go right now without uh, without more skinny rebar. I guess I'll go inside and do a live. Just about to go live and Clint shows up. Hey, what are you doing? You know, making bases. Making some bases? Yeah. Okay, come here, before you do anything, come here, come here, come here. Remember the last time when we made the uh, the gate? Yeah. And then you came in right as I finished something? Well, I'm not finished, but what do you think so far? Oh, sweet, man. So these are supposed to be the hops? Yeah. Those are cool. And then the leaves. And the leaves. Just need to think of a scrolly bit for yeah. in there, which I haven't thought of yet, but if you have something in mind. That looks good though. Cool. Um, well, we kind of want to mimic what we did on the other one, right? So yeah. Check out this. To... I busted this hammer somehow. Whoa. Just by using it. Crazy. Weird, right? That is weird. This is a shit material. It's like um, cast. Or yeah, it's whatever. cast. Yeah, for sure. Huh. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. 
mimic the, the other one with some scrolliness. And some, yeah, I don't know, like some kind of whatever, right? Like we did on the other one. Mm hmm. You have some half inch? I don't think I have any left. I'm going to pick up a bit for tomorrow then or something. Okay, because I was hoping to have this done for you for tomorrow. Let me go look outside and see what we got. Okay. This is what we ended up coming up with. Clint had to go uh, pick up a new stick of rebar, but it was worth it. I usually like doing it strictly reclaimed if we can, but we just didn't have any more rebar. But this is going to complement the gate that I already made pretty well. We put a snail and uh, a butterfly and some hops and then some leaves, some copper leaves. This is going to be great. And I still didn't completely run out of gas. I was hoping to finish this in time to have Clint install this today over at the uh, basement pub there. Or the, uh, the dog and bone pub, they're calling it. But uh, I didn't work quick enough and Clint has already gone home for the day. So this is just going to stay here for a bit, uh, for a bit longer. Um, but in the meantime... Remember last vlog when I got new tires, I said I also needed new shocks? Well, I've needed new shocks for a little while now, but I figured I would just get them installed at the same time I got the new tires installed. But unfortunately, they don't sell the shocks that I wanted anymore for this truck, which is a bummer. And they're having a Canada-wide shortage on the shocks that I could get. So... I have to wait until they come in. But, fortunately, I have some awesome friends. What's up guys? This is Josh. And he found me what I need. Actually, not just what I need, but what I initially wanted. So this is what he's currently taking off over on the other side. And this is what he has just installed over on this side. Look at the difference. I mean, besides the, the grime and gunk, but the size, it's way bigger. It's gonna be way better. It's gonna serve me a lot better. They're adjustable. Shaft size is twice the size. Oh yeah, and the shaft size, yeah. It's wicked. I remember when I was in LA, when I first got this truck, and I was taking off the, uh, the steering stabilizers, which are in the front there. And uh, here, I'll grab that from you. There you go, bro. I'll hand you the new one. Nice. But anyway, uh, I had put them all on, you know, nice and new, nice and like really hard to push, you know. They had like all the nice pressure. I just finally get them on. And then I realized I freaking forgot to put the boots on. Oh, no. So I had to take them off and then put the boots on and then put them back on again. It was a real pain. That's a damn convenience, eh? Yeah, but as you can see, guys, I made sure to put the boots on first this time. Oh, nice. <laughs> like, what a pain in the ass. Look at the travel these things have. It almost reaches the ground. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be wicked. These are going to be awesome, yeah. Nice. I need to get a shim, though. A shim, okay. Yeah. Yeah, if we can get out of here. Well, the beauty about my truck is that, like, it's super high up. So, like, you don't have to, like, shimmy your way. I mean, you kind of do underneath the drive shaft there. But, like, if this was your truck, you'd have to, like, really... Uh... Yeah, I had to jack that up earlier for sure. <laughs> you, ju you just did your shocks? I did. I did the front shocks. They're all, all four of them. They're all Rancho as well. Uh, okay. Oh, you got two shocks in the front. I got three. Ah, you got twice the truck too, bro. <laughs> That's a great sound. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so another awesome thing about having uh, Josh find these uh, shocks for me is uh, I got them for half price. So basically what I would have paid for the shocks 
that we just took or like the same kind that we just took off I got for the new ones did I say that right I think so yeah. <laughs> basically I got a way better shock for the price of the ones that we just took off new that's right that still sounds sloppy kind of does <laughs> you guys get what I mean maybe all right let's take it for a test drive let's do it Feels way different with the new tires, too. Yeah, they're nice. Okay. Now, since it's rained and uh, uh, they want to raise our taxes here, so they're making sure that everyone wants a paved road. They do basically no road maintenance, so it is bumpy oh. as shit. So let's go over the bumps. I mean, we're still on my driveway now. Actually, you know what? I already feel a difference. Man, way different. There's no rattle or clank back there or nothing. Okay, let's hit these bumps hard. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there we are. Minus whatever's rattling. That is way better, dude. Okay, now let's go over to where they fixed the road and see yeah. how that feels. Yeah, fixed it, yeah. So right up there where that black patch is, they did some cold paving. And uh, earlier, it felt way bumpier. It's still bumpy because, you know, they didn't actually fix it. They, they actually made it worse. I didn't notice anything was wrong there until they, they fixed it. But I can definitely still feel that. But, I mean, you're going to feel some bumps. Obviously, there's bumps there, right? But it is yeah. a lot smoother. It so. is way smoother. Way smoother. No more rattle. Eat up the bumps. And they're adjustable, so we can hop out and we can make the adjustments. So we, even better. Yeah, let's adjust them now. Sure, let's do it. Okay, we'll just pull over here. All the way around halfway. Uh, I went to quarter. Okay, halfway, okay. Wanna give it a shot? Sure, let's see what happens. Okay. Okay. Let's figure it out here. Oh, even as a passenger. I mean, no one watching can see all the bumps that are on the road, but we have a lot of gravel roads around us, and so we, we're almost non-stop bumpy. Really strange house, guys, but what's up with that goose chilling up on there? <laughs> That's awesome. That's my sister-in-law. Yeah. <laughs> Holy moly. Bumpy, but not too bumpy. Right? Bumpy because that's very bumpy, but smooth, not uncomfortable. Not like, oh, that compressed my spine. Right? It's I actually, like it. It's actually reasonable and, and enjoyable. Oh man, that last clip freaking hurt my armpit. I was hanging out of the door trying to get a good shot and it's just like but nice and smooth. So thank you very much, Josh. Yes, good. It's awesome. Look, Love that it works. He also uh, he, <laughs> he also shined my tires so that they would look new, even though I just got them new two days ago. <laughs> well, might as well make them, make them look new. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. You're welcome.
welcome, bro. Okay, so what do you figure? Should we uh, turn them up all the way? Like, is it getting stiffer the I more we so. turn them up? I think so. I think our best bet is actually to turn them back down to one. Use them, and after when they start wearing out, we can slowly adjust them up after a year or two or three or five or however long they last. Okay. That'd probably be our best bet. Okay. Let's turn them back down then, I guess. Man, and I'm so oh. glad that we uh, got these in here because before, dude, they were looking rough. That is not what it's supposed to look like. There's supposed to be a bushing in there. Kind of like that one, but not all mashed up like that. So that's why we had to replace them. What a difference this is. So if you guys uh, are local to me and you need something done on your vehicle, I will have his information in the description. He does just about everything with vehicles. In right. fact, he's actually working on, on this rig here right now. And we're having kind of a... Uh, uh, a friendly argument? Is that what you would call it? I don't a know. Debate. A debate a on whether or not we should go with a classic original restoration or if we should make this thing into a... A rat rod. Yeah. My, my vote is rat rod because it's already rusty. It already needs a lot of work. I used to have a truck just like this. Uh, is this a 91? A 90, yeah. Okay, so I had a 91, but looks exactly the same. 91 was the last year of this, and then we went into this body style, which is very similar. It's just uh, a different front end, uh, basically. B basically, the rest looks the, the same, except for the interior as well. That's right, that's but right. I basically had this exact truck, except for that it was white. And it's kind of the exact opposite of the truck that I have now. This is a, a short bed uh, single cab, whereas the one that I have now is a quad cab long bed. Um, but anyway, I thought since it's already got some beautiful patina, you know, the hood is kind of stripped here. It's got uh, other bits of, well, not so much rust on this side because you've already started doing some. Yeah. But I was like, dude, nobody makes rat rods this new. It would be different. It would look badass. And, uh, if you wanted to get it uh, like a factory looking truck, you could probably start with one that's basically mint like I did, get one from California. Right, get a rust free unit first. Yeah, that's a good idea. Now, if he does go back to factory, he wants to uh, get me to, uh, this used to have these, what edition is this? Uh, XLT Lariat. Oh, it was the Lariat, okay. So the Lariat, was it all Lariats or just the green Lariats that had the stripes? The pinstripes. Um, uh, it was a it was a paint option to have the stripes down the side. Yeah. Okay, so he wants to put the stripes back down here. You can see they they're kind of showing up. Uh, these would have been a, a, a sticker kind. There's more. There's more down here as well. Oh yeah, yeah. And they run all the way down the whole side of the vehicle. And then they have like a. I'll try to find a picture and put it here. Anyway, he wants to do that again, but he wants them to be hand striped, which is going to look dope but on the back he wants me to do uh uh some sort of art some yeah. sort of uh Almost like trees or something like a bob ross type painting bring bring bob ross back to life and uh and maybe we can get some some happy trees and some nature scenes on the back of this wilderness type truck here so we could do that with a rat rod too we definitely could so what do you guys think i my vote is rat rod. Rat rod even with some pinstriping. In fact, since I don't know how to pinstripe, the rat rod would give me some lenience in my uh, deficiencies. That's right, yeah, we could, we could definitely work with those. So what do you guys think? Should he spend time putting this back to factory or go uh, rat rod? Let us know what you think. I think rat rod, it would be so badass. I really wanted to do that with mine. In fact, I sold it only 200 bucks because uh it, it was a five liter is this a five liter uh it's a inline six actually okay so mine mine was uh was a little different but basically looked the same but anyways i sold it for 200 bucks plus uh another couple hundred bucks to drive it to the dude's house and when we got to his house because he lived about an hour away i was like uh I think I'm going to take this back home because I loved right, it. Right, yeah. And then I didn't have another one until I got this one last year. But 
She's a beauty. It would be so sick to make this one a rat rod and then maybe get another one rust free from a rust free state or even if you could find a rust free one in Canada. The thing about getting these trucks here in Canada as they're they're going up in value, they are very expensive. My truck would be about 25-ish thousand dollars. Yeah. If it was a diesel, it could go all the way up into 30 grand uh Canadian dollars. And your truck, it's a little bit older. Um uh for the this body style, this this configuration with the inline six is a little less valuable, but still like you are going to be paying like at least 10,000 for a mint truck oh, yeah. all the way up into 15,000 for this truck here. And, and Whereas in the U S you can get them for like three grand. Exactly. So yeah, they're dirt cheap down there. What do you guys think with all that information? Rat rod factory rat rod. Let's see what they say. All right. Thanks a lot for your help, dude. You betcha, man. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, no, really appreciate it. Definitely. Thank you. This is going to help me because tomorrow I am going to be loading it up. I'm helping my uh, friend uh, move a bunch of stuff out of a hoarder house. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Well, enjoy that. And uh, hopefully she works well for you hauling the, hauling the heavy loads. So definitely. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Information in the description. You bet. So yesterday I did a, a gift opening while taking a break from the basement pub project because I ran out of material. And uh, today now I'm going back to the basement pub to pick up new material because Clint picked up what I need. And uh, on my way there I decided to stop at the post office again even though it's not my regular mailing day. Dropped off some packages to go out and uh, check my P.O. box and uh, sometimes People don't want me to open the letter or package in a in a video. Yesterday I did two videos because I forgot <laughs> I forgot some packages. Um, I got three more packages today, and one of them was his letter. It says, "Do not do not read on your channel." And when I open up the letter here, the first line says, "Do not read on YouTube, please." Uh, <laughs> dude, this guy. Wants to remain anonymous, but he uh, he sent me 250 bucks. That's crazy. Um, he says here. Oh. <laughs> okay, you know what? I want to check it. You can have a memo. I didn't even notice this. Uh, he put for flooring, not tires. Haha. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that's clever. In the uh, in the in the letter here he says don't send me any postcards i'm not going to use them just take this instead well i don't know i don't know what to say man anonymous dw will call you 250 bucks postcards are only 25 dollars but dang thank you you could have bought like how many with this he doesn't want anything in return but i wanted to acknowledge him even though he wants to remain anonymous thank you dw from america <laughs> you guys are the best anyway time to head over to the basement pub pick up material and uh finish up the project and then head back to the basement pub <laughs> thank you guys thanks for watching